my name is Bianca Brooks and you are now watching Trading Photos and we are reporting live from Times Square, New York. Today we will be covering the Writers Guild of America strike right here and sag after members are standing in solidarity with them. Tune in so you can find out why this strike is important. interviewing WGA member Jenna. How are you today? Nice to meet you. I'm well. Thank you. Wonderful. So would you like to tell for those who don't know, what is the strike about? Yes, it's really about writers being able to keep pace with the expansion of how the media business is growing. Um, it seems that a lot of our jobs are being turned into gig jobs and our share of the revenue that really comes from the script. A lot of people don't think about, a lot of people say scripts are creative, but they're really business plans. And so from that script, you get all the jobs. You get the director, you get the cast, you get the crew. And yet a lot of writers aren't able to make a full wage through the year on shows that really create a lot of revenue for the larger companies because the business structures don't really uh, expand. Um, especially with the layoffs, you see that it's faulty and the people who are paying the costs are the workers. Um, but it's also a trend across the United States where we're talking about, I guess, the role of business and the role of labor and what does business owe labor um, and their responsibility to making sure that we all have the access to a basic middle class lifestyle. Yeah. All right. So I know streaming is referred to as new media. How do you think, how much do you think writers have lost now because the contracts are very much different for new media? I'm not able to speak to that topic, um, but I will say that new media, the term came about back when Netflix was new. And so that, that the, la the last writer's strike, which I guess is almost 10 years ago, was really about making sure the writers for Netflix would be paid at the same level that they would for HBO. Um, and I think that because it was gray, it was a harder to fight for what the Writers Guild always wanted. Uh, most contracts, are, are we get the less of what we're asking for. Uh, but it's really about when if we can't see the future, how do we accommodate for not getting shortchanged on the future when the bigger companies is planning for a profit. And how much do you estimate that writers would lose if AI is not controlled in the industry? Um, I think it's beyond a numerical count. Um, it's really, I'm doing camera now. <laughs> uh, it's about really um, copywriting. So like if I write something and it's combed through the internet, did the did they bot write it or did I write it and I'm not credited for it? Uh, it's also about deciding what is replaceable and what's not replaceable. So, you know, can you replace succession with a bot? Um, can, you, can you incorporate inclusion with a bot? So, uh, a writer shared with me that she had used AI to find quotes from famous black movies. And the first quote that came up was from King Kong, the movie. And the quote was, I am King Kong. So as an African American, as someone of Asian descent, as someone of African descent, as someone who's um, non-white, AI doesn't really tell stories that have already been excluded. So, so sorry, I just want to say that it's what the people, the viewers will lose in terms of representation. So the last strike was about 100 days. How long do you estimate this strike will go on for? Uh, I, will, I will aim for a lower strike. I hope that the producers will come to the table and respond to the demands versus ignoring them. I think that a lot of people don't realize that like it takes two people to negotiate. So if, if the producers don't want to have a conversation, we can't participate in one. Um, so I know that the, the screenwriter's contract ends and at the end of this month. And so I'm assuming it will it'll depend on how, how much they value directors and screenwriters before they come back to writers. Okay. And for the people who are watching who are not in the union, how can they support? Uh, it's really just important to share articles and have conversations with friends about how they feel in their own lives, what makes them feel worthy. Because it's not about, a lot of times we get focused on those people or what those people need, but it's a collective conversation on what we think, when we retire, what does retirement look like? So because of unions, writers who work from project to project can get a retirement at 65. Um, because of unions, writers get health care. It's not because of the major companies. Because of unions, we get credits. 
Um, even because of all unions, we get the weekend. So a lot of the things that we think are part of our professional life that companies grant, it's because of individuals affirming their own worth. And just like the United States is a product of individual citizens affirming what makes a good country, so is business. Business is another, we're, we're capitalist society, so we have to be as active in government as we are with business. All right, well, thank you so much for doing this interview. Can you spell your name and let the people know where they could find you on social media? Sure. Um, Jenna Bond, it's J-E-N-N-A, B-O-N-D, and my social for Instagram and Twitter is at the Jenna Bond. All right, well, thank you so much for doing this interview. Thank you. I love m and so, yeah. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Robin. How are you today? I'm an dimension. Hi, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. So you are a member of SAG-AFTRA, correct? Yes, I am. All right, wonderful. So how do you feel about SAG-AFTRA supporting WGA in this strike? Well, we need them as much as they need us, so we need to be here for them. And we're getting ready to go into contract negotiation on June 7th. A lot of our problem is with AI. Um, a lot of uh, voiceover has been taking over. I know a friend who actually worked on a set in a movie, and she said nothing. But later when we saw the movie, she had a voice. It wasn't her voice. She didn't get paid for that. The reason why, because AI jumped in, took her voice, and they just made gave her no money and paid her no contract money for her words. Which wasn't coming out of her mouth, but the point is that it was AI. So taking jobs away from us that way. They're asking us to audition for um, any kind of film or television, and we have to do it at home. Since the pandemic, we've had to be filming at home, doing auditions at home. The problem is, one shot, two shots of sight, that's okay. But they ask us to do all scenes, several times, sending in pictures, sending them in again. This costs money and time. They used to walk into an uh, office and audition. Not letting us go. They don't have offices now. Everyone's gone remote. We lose money this way. Everybody's losing money. No one's winning now. And we need to come negotiate better ways of getting this done, or pay us for our second and third auditions. All right. So, Robin, you made some very good points. How many jobs do you think may be lost to AI if they continue to do something like this? Oh, tens of thousands. Most everybody here, you know, from a writer to an actor to makeup artist, everyone's going to lose out on this. It's not just us. Right now, we're trying to say something because we're not getting paid. Makeup artists, stage direction, lighting, everybody's you don't get paid. It's no good. If you got greed, you're not going to have anything else but greed. So everybody's got to share the love. And you also mentioned something very important. You said we're going into negotiations June 6th? June 7th. We're going to negotiations with Screen Actors Guild. And right now, that's why the Screen Actors Guild is trying to support WGA. If we, they can't get what they're going to get done, we're not going to be able to get what we want to get done. And we have to support them because they, our words come out of their mouth. You know what I'm saying? Our words are them. And if you don't have writers, you're going to have repeats after repeats. And it's not going to be any good. So we really need to support the writers. The Screen Actors Guild really needs to step up along with the writers. Come on, directors, help us out financially. Executive producers, you're doing fine with your three pool houses in a pool. Share the wealth. Well, you were telling us about the audition? Normally when you have an audition, you submit your picture and resume, and then your agent will get back to you. Now your agent is saying, okay, can you send in your picture and your resume and read the script this way, read the script that way, put, change your clothes, etc. Et Sometimes it takes two to three hours to get one of these auditions done. It's ridiculous. And don't forget, I've already spent money on uh, my, my, my new phone, my iPhone that I shoot on, or some people use their camera. You've got, I've got to pay, I had to pay $100 for my lighting. I have now a room that I have to move around and also put on a screen. That screen cost me another fifty dollars. I mean, this thing's cost money, and we're not getting re we're not getting compensated for it. They're getting lazy. Production companies now say, oh, "Okay, just meet us on Zoom, and we'll talk to you about." How do you know somebody on Zoom? Come on. Why are we? So I understand the pandemic took away a lot, but now we're back. So, pay us what we're owed. Get out of your pocket the money you owe us for what we've done in the past because they're getting a little slow on that too. The residuals are taking a long time to get to us. And we have a lot of, I know people who are talking, have you gotten your residuals yet from two months ago? No, hasn't it? It's not in yet. So a lot of things are going on. We're trying to catch up. What we really want to say is that we need to come together, get these contracts signed, pay us what we're owed, pay us for a second and third audition if we have a call back. Instead, like we normally would have done if we're sitting two or three hours in the casting agency office, we start to get paid as union. But they can't do that when we're remote. So, you know, you're queued up in line. They're keeping asking you to come in, send in more uh, videos of yourself doing your... Uh, audition in an accent, whatever they want, and that's taking more of our time. Time is money, as they know. $5,000 a minute on a film set.
So how much do you think that actors have to spend now to have their own home studio to audition? That would be cameras, microphones, lights, backdrop. I'm sure it could vary, but I'm sure 300 plus because everyone usually has to have a cell phone. Now you need to update a cell phone that can videotape you, that can uh, zoom in, zoom out. We have to do a slate. We have to do a full length of ourselves. We need now something to hold that camera up or your phone up so you have to get a tripod. Then you need lighting. Then you need a backdrop. Some people don't want blue backdrops. They want green backdrops. Some, some backdrops come double-sided. Some don't. It's really extraordinary how much we've had to put it. I'm like a film producer right now on my own stuff just for my own auditions. And what's worse, like I said before, if they're not asking us to come in to be seen, they're seeing us on Zoom. Well, guess what? You have to pay for Zoom, too. You have to pay for any of these places that you have to go through the Internet. To upload things costs a fortune. I have to put myself up on YouTube because I have a larger format when it comes to, I don't know, the computer stuff, so that I can send my audition if it's more than a minute. That's all you can get on your iPhone. This costs money. And no one is taking that into consideration. And that's what the problem is with our contracts. We need to be taken seriously for what we do. We need to be paid like we used to be for auditions after an hour of sitting there waiting to be seen. Same thing. So members of the union range in age. And to do some of these things, it sounds like you'd have to be pretty tech savvy. Do you think that this is a problem for older members of the union who might have to do this on their own? Unfortunately, yes, that is a big problem. I know a lot of friends who are not so tech savvy. I've tried to keep up as much as I can. I'm always asking questions of other members. Although the SAG um, union does have, uh, in the foundation, they do have programs, what we used to have before the pandemic, teaching people how to get up to speed as far as website, making your own website, creating your own website, um, doing your own videos. But yes, it's, we've had to do a big catch up when it comes to all this financially and people have spent money on something they didn't need because they didn't know they didn't need it. It's, it's a drag. It's, 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 I really feel bad for the senior citizens and people, older people who are still working by the way. They're still being cast in front of the camera, background, all of that. So when do you estimate that this strike will be over? I hope tomorrow, but who knows? Again, coming up in June, we have to negotiate our terms. And hopefully, you know, we'll see what, SAG, what uh, WG8 happens with them. We could be on strike very soon. No more TV, no more movies, no more fresh stuff. Repeat, repeat. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I like to see a new series of Succession or any of those shows that we get attached to. We can't take it for granted. All right, well, thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate you taking time to do this interview with us. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> we are here speaking to WGA member Mara. Thank you for doing this interview with us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Okay, so Mara, for the people who don't know, let them know, what is the strike about? So the strike is about um, basically um, the WGA uh, union members are not getting the fair pay that they deserve. Um, it's basically the job has become sort of like a gig economy where you're like not even living paycheck to paycheck. You're just like, you know, living like dollar to dollar, cent to dollar. So the writers are basically asking the AMPTP to, you know, give them at least 2% of the shares so that, you know, they could at least have a living wage. And um, they refuse to come to the table and make a deal. So, um, so uh, essentially, WGA is on strike until they agree to at least most of our terms. Okay. And how do you think AI will affect writers and actors? Uh, I think it will affect um, uh, writers and actors uh, very severely because um, we're already seeing it. Um, you know, I saw on Twitter a couple of days ago that um, one, uh, I'm not sure which brand it was, but they started using um, AI models to uh, show their clothes off. And, um, you know, a lot of people understandably were very upset with it because it's essentially saying, we don't need to pay you anymore. Uh, you know, if they, if, you know, like someone demands, you know, fair pay, they don't have to abide by it because they already have a machine, you know, to um, do for them. It's the same with writers. Um, you know, they, a lot of these studios think that they can just input, um, you know, a prompt into ChatGPT and ChatGPT will just give them like a, a script. So it's, um, you know, basically the whole industry is at stake because everything will be, you know, bot made and no soul into it. So, and you had also mentioned residuals. How much do you estimate in residuals would be lost if they began using AI? Um, a lot. Uh, I can't even give you a number. Like, I think it, it would be, um, you know, I want to say like 90% like or something like that. Yeah. 
do you think new media has affected residuals? Because I was hearing people talk about that. Yeah, so uh, streaming has essentially, you know, unfortunately um, has affected, you know, um, a lot of what writers used to make because before it was, um, you know, writers used to um, get their money from when it was on cable. Every time it would episodes would air, they would get their fair share from payment. But because of streaming, the uh, studios have figured they don't need to do that anymore, and so as a result, they, um, you know, it's just it's gotten so low, and so unfortunately with new media, um, you know, it it just, um, you know, writers just they don't gain what they used to gain. So, when it comes to new media, do you think that if it changed, because I had saw a bit of the contract, do you think that if it changed to be equal to television, that that would make a difference when it comes to residuals? Yeah, I really do think if, you know, the thing is, um, the studios are so behind when it comes to, um, you know, uh, when it comes to, you know, present day. I think um, if they could just update, like, the contracts and just, you know, um, make it so that writers can get their fair share with, you um, um, with what's streaming, that I think um, that that could be like a great improvement, and it's not really—they're not really asking for that much. Like it's at least two percent, so they won't lose, you know, much of their money. Um, it's just that they, you know, they—they just don't want to give it up for whatever reason. So, how long do you estimate this strike will go on? Because the last strike had gone on, I think it was for about a hundred days. Yes. Um. Well, I've been hearing from a few people. Um, that this could go on possibly longer than the last strike. People are saying it could go possibly far into August latest. Um, earliest probably, you know, July. I, I honestly estimate that, you know, we're going to be here for as long as we're going to be here. Um, I'm going to say maybe September possibly. Um, you know, it all depends on, you know, um, on what happens next, especially with sag and with the DGA. And what do you think that people who are viewers who are watching this, what do you think they can do to support? Um, what they can do is they could, you know, if they're very serious and they want to do something, they want to help out, you know, their fellow, you know, just their fem fellow people, they can definitely come and join the strike. You know, they don't have to be WGA, they don't have to be sag -Aftra, they don't have to be anything. They can just, you know, show up and, and you know, help out. They can, um, they can give money to the Writers Fund, which, um, will help the WGA members because right now because they're on strike they're not getting um, they're not getting paid they can't afford their rent they can't go you know they can't pay medical bills so the, all that money that they give the people can give to that fund that will greatly help them while they're on strike and then also like you know um, help keep up the fight until we don't have to ask for that anymore all right, and thank you for mentioning the Writers Fund. That is very important because right now people aren't working. Yeah, um, you know, it's unfortunate because, um, you know, a lot of us, we don't want to be on strike. You know, we don't want to be here. We want to be, like, inside. We want to be writing. We want to be giving the people, because it's a, it's a craft. It's, it's a career. It's, you know, everyone wants to do what they love. But, um, you know, unfortunately, so many people have to give up, like, because of, um, of, of this kind of situation. So... Um, you know, it's it's really not much. It's really not asking for much. So, yeah. Okay, and I really want to thank you for doing this interview with us. It really means a lot. All right, and most importantly, what would you tell uh, scabbing? Like, what, what, could you discuss that? Um, so, what would I say to scabs? Or yeah, like, what would you discuss? Because a lot of people aren't too sure about the term, and I just recently learned yeah. what the term is. So, a scabbing is basically someone who is, um, you know. Either it could be a union member, but it could also mostly like non-union people who cross the picket line. So, for example, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of um, not going to name names, but a, a few people have you know done that. Um, so, you know, they will, for example, for the Writers Guild, they will um, rewrite scripts. They will, um, you know, um, they will go into film production or, or something like that. Um, so, what I would say is like, and if, if you like, um, in terms of like someone to you know who's going to scab, I would say, you know, look, it's understandable. It's, it's understandable that, you know, you want to make your money. You want to, um, you know, you want to do what you can do to, you know, unfortunately, that's just the, the capitalist society we live in. But also, like, think about it in the long term. If you're a writer and you want to, you know, make this your career, it's not going to look good for you and you're not going to be allowed into WGA. And just do it, like, just don't do it out of just, like, common human decency. It's, it's just, it's not... 
you know, it's it's just like, you know, I think it's about empathy. It's it's really truly about empathy. Like, you have more in common with the people here than you would with David Zaslav or Bob Iger. All right, thank you for doing this interview with us today, Mara. Let the people know where they can find you on social media. Okay, thank you so much. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Mara Del Rosa. That's M A R A. D-E-L-R-O-S-A. I post every day, every strike I go to, um, you know, photos, videos. And on Twitter, you can find me at Delmara Rosa, D-E-L-M-A-R-A, and then R-O-S-A. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for interviewing me. It was nice meeting you. Thank you.
interview with us. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, it's, a, it's an unfortunate reason to be here, but it's a beautiful day and I, I, I can't ask for a better bunch of people to be on strike with. And how long have you been in WTA? Wow, well this is my third strike. So I'm a lifetime member. I joined uh, in the 80s. Um, I may as well be honest, right? You're not going to tell any possible employers what my age is. Um, I've been a member since the mid-80s. Uh, I barely knew what the Writers Guild was, and I've learned through the years how important it is to the welfare, the daily welfare and the future welfare of writers. Um, I was fortunate. I lived in Los Angeles. I had a lot of really good gigs. Um, and the protections that the Writers Guild offered me are the reasons I'm out here. I still get residuals for work that I've done in the past. Maybe it's just pennies at this point. Um, other projects that aren't covered by the Writers Guild, like Children's Animation, one fee and I'm, that's it, you're done. My episodes of Arthur could play around the world for a million years and somehow I might get pennies through some source, but not through any kind of guild coverage because it's not covered by the Writers Guild. And that's not the kind of job that we want for Writers Guild members. We don't want them working, we don't want to be working on individual scripts and then you're gone. In some cases you're helping to create a show and then you're gone. No, writers 
are the creators of so much of what we watch and uh, they deserve ownership of their work and protections that their uh, credits are appropriate. Anyway, I'm going on about the Writers Guild, but I'm very passionate about it. And now, you know, I have a pension and I have health insurance, uh, all thanks to the Writers Guild. And uh, as I said before, the best part of a strike is just meeting everybody who's in your guild and all the friends from SAG-AFTRA and other unions who are here to support us. Um, it's a great way to spend an afternoon if you don't have a job or if you're <laughs> striking from your job. Okay, so for the people watching, let them know, how will AI affect riders if it's not regulated? Wow. Um, I don't have a very good answer to that. Uh, I think it's the, kind, it's the kind of question that, you know, you, you really don't know what the right answer is. You don't know what the answer is until it, it unfolds. Uh, that's sort of the problem. AI can kind of invent itself as it goes along. And, you know, the, look, the direct threat is the obvious one. It's like, Will AI be able to generate scripts that we do? That's a very big question. And it kind of highlights the issue of the corporation versus the human being. And if a corporation can get AI to replace a thousand human beings, a corporation will do that. Even if, even if the uh, project or, or whatever whatever they're trying to accomplish turns out subpar as long as it gets the job done I, I I don't know what AI is going to do to writers precisely and it's a tool for writers to use you know artists should be allowed to use artificial intelligence to create their work it should be somehow I mean it's here you can't just reject it you can't just ignore it I mean, you can ignore it, you could ignore anything you want, you could ignore this, and I suggest you do. But, um, you know, to me it's interesting because writers have been writing about AI for years, and now we're confronted by it. And it, 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 it really is a compelling question. And I, I don't know that, I mean, people might guess at answers, but, I'm not going to try uh, to guess it at an answer. I'm less concerned about AI and more concerned about the corporations and how it'll be used. There'll be a point at which AI can take over, I'm sure. But right now, it's still the humans at the top of this food chain that uh, I think are our largest concern. Can you let people know, for people who are not in the union, how they can support you right now? Well, um, there. Well, for one thing, if you're out on the streets of New York or L.A. or Chicago, uh, 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 you know, the horn honks. This this strike compared to the last strike in 2007, this strike is so energized within the union and also the people passing by honking the horns and cheering. Uh, you know, there's that. But get educated. Read the credits. I grew up reading credits. I was obsessed with who wrote what show. Because it was a mystery to me. There are all these names at the end of the show if you want to stick around and watch them. And at the beginning, there are a few names. And they're somehow responsible for this thing that's entertaining me. Who are they? Where do they live? What do they do? How do they make this happen? Read the credits. The difference between the last strike and this strike, which isn't the question you ask, I know, but it's like I, I feel like people really know who writers are and what they do, and darn it, well, damn it is what I really wanted to say, and I was trying to be polite and it sounded all wrong. Damn it, it's nice to feel a little like a celebrity when you're a writer. It's nice to feel that you as an artist are being recognized, even if it's just they don't know who I am, but they see the sign, you know? And, uh, you know, 
there are some writers who are boycotting, not just ticketing, but boycotting their Netflix uh, 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 subscription until this deal is over. You know, why support? I mean, you know, there are ways to get at the corporations and, and you know, hurt them a little bit, show them that the consumer has power. Because I'll tell you, the consumer, if, if, if there are raises, if we get things we want, a lot, that, that will be passed along to the consumers. Corporations aren't so generous that they say, okay, we made the deal, we'll handle this all ourselves. When your Netflix subscription price goes up, uh, you know, don't blame the writers. <laughs> Somebody somewhere can sell a yacht and, and, and uh, uh, you know, pay for a lot of writers who, who, who should have uh, uh, the protections and the, the, the proper pay uh, uh, I don't want to say pay scale, but fair recompense for your work. You know, that means a lot of different things to a lot of people in different circumstances. But we want fair pay, and it's not just a writer's issue. This is a societal issue. This goes up and down. Our, 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 our social and political uh, chains of command I, you know this is this is a bigger issue than just a writer's strike really I don't want to sound like a like a socialist screaming on a soapbox but I completely understand this is uh, something that is affecting all of us well question for you David what was your first union project Wow uh, well I was very fortunate uh, to be brought into the union by Steve Martin, more or less. Uh, my writing partner and I, former writing partner and a friend of mine, still, uh, he was a journalist and he interviewed Steve Martin uh, once for Connoisseur Magazine about Steve's art collection. He spent a week with Steve in LA in the mid 80s. Found out Steve was producing a series of comedy anthology half hours just half-hour comedies, half-hour films called George Burns Comedy Week. Legendary comic George Burns hosted it and it was just a half-hour comedy film and Roger impressed Steve so much that he broke protocol and said, could we I have a writing partner, we do comedy, could we pitch a project? And he said, sure, you know, here's my partners coming out to New York, meet with Carl Gottlieb and and we pitched our little 20-something heart hearts out and we, uh, we did it. We got a script and Steve Martin, you know, went to the mat for us, the new writers, CBS said, no, they can sell us a story, but they're new, they're young, they're inexperienced, no script. You write, the Steve Martin said, I'll guarantee the script. Let them write their script. And it paid off. And let me tell you, when you start your career working for Steve Martin, uh, where do you go <laughs> from there? So, but I've been fortunate, I, I, I really have, and it was a very exciting way to get into the business. So that script, that half hour comedy film on George Burns Comedy Week was the first union project, first Writers Guild project we worked on. And then we uh, became a full-time staff uh, a person on a spin-off of George Burns Comedy Week, not our episode, a different episode. And that's, I forget exactly what the steps were to being in the Guild, but that's what got us there. And of all the dreams I had, I never dreamed that that's the way it would happen, you know? And it's, it's wonderful uh, to think back on it. And in fact, the, the script that we wrote, the story we wrote, very much had elements of Steve Martin's life as somebody wanted to be taken seriously uh, but was also the wild and crazy guy and we didn't realize just how much it was like his story and ultimately our own stories Rogers and mine my former partner uh, writing can be an amazing thing and and something that you wrote 20 years ago 30 years ago 
you look back on it, you realize what a difference it made. Yeah, and we were ready, and that's that's the important thing. We we were ready to write that script. If that came out of nowhere and we weren't, and I don't know what ready means exactly, except that we both wrote so much, and we were doing a lot of comedy together, um, and we grew up digesting TV like it was breakfast cereal, and you know it was more or less, and uh, we were ready to do it. And we did it, and and uh, now here I am, decades later, still striking. Glad I got legs I can walk on, and and words I can write, you know. So, yeah, so so that's how I got in the business. It's it's it was a it was a wonderful and horrible first job to have because it really set up my expectations. Like every job is going to be like working with Steve Martin. And it wasn't. <laughs> every job wasn't. But every job had wonderfulness in its own way and stresses because it's a job. It's writing. Anyway, that's my first job, my first Guild cover job. And well, that is amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, uh, after walking in circles all day, I'm talking in circles all day now. So thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, be well. A pleasure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap. Make sure you subscribe to the Trading Photos YouTube channel.